Okay, folks, welcome to lecture three of the maths module. So in this lecture, we're going to take a look at decimals, decimal places and significant figures. So some of it you'll be familiar with and then some of it will be completely new to you. So do pay attention. So we just take a look when sums go bad. This was a decimal place error. So when Spain was building um, its S-80 submarine program, 2.4 billion program, and a small calculation error was made. There was a decimal place error made, and one of the major components was actually 70 tons overweight. So as a result, they were actually afraid that if they launched a submarine, it would never actually come up again. So 12 million euros later, the problem was resolved. So again, guys, it's easy to make mistakes, but rectifying them can be very, very costly. So we're going to take a look at decimals. Addition and subtraction, most people are familiar with because every time we pick up a receipt, decimals is part of what we see. So say we're given a list of decimal numbers like this. First thing, always try and list them. Next, line up the decimal points. So we're familiar with this, I think, uh, intuitively. Very good tip then, guys, is to fill in any missing zeros. And now we just do the addition as before. Remember to look for pairs that add to 10. So there's 10 and one is 11. Now I'm not going to take you through the horror of that. We'll just write up the answer. But again, guys, it's crucial with addition and subtraction of decimals, you must keep your decimal points lined up and everything follows that uh, linear path. Now we're going to take a look at multiplication and most of you are quite happy to tap away at your calculator, but you've actually forgotten the process. And this is what I'm going to be examining, guys, in the continuous assessment test. So I'm not going to be testing how well can you use a calculator. I'm going to be testing your understanding. So say we're given these two values to multiply. How you go about figuring these guys is because there's two decimal points in the problem, you're in loads of trouble. You cannot progress with the problem written as it is. So what we do is we actually record the decimal places in each value. So in the top value, there's two decimal places. In the lower value, there's one decimal place. We add these together. So now we know that there's three decimal places in our answer. Now we just write out the sum with no decimal places because we've taken care of the decimal point. Again, two by eight, two, three. Multiply by three, don't forget the zero. Add your answers. Again, guys, I don't want to spend ages doing this. You're kind of, the point of the lecture is to get to the main points. Now, so this is our answer. Now, even looking at our estimation, guys, we have eight by three. My answer should be somewhere around 24. So that's one clue as to where the decimal point should go. But this is our gold carrot definition. So this is our answer. And the decimal point always comes in from the right, guys. So three decimal places comes in from the right, even though it bounced in from the left. So you always start at the right. And that's three decimal places there. Remember to estimate, especially when decimals are involved. If it's easily done, guys, it's very hard to estimate, say, something like 0 0.08 multiplied by 0 0.3. That's very difficult to estimate. You'd spend longer to estimate in it than you would actually calculate it. So that, guys, is your multiplication of decimals. You need to figure out how many decimal places am I dealing with at the start. Add those together. And that tells you then where the decimal point is going to lie in your answer. So now here's one of your questions. Calculate the following decimal problem. So don't forget to pause the video, guys.
calculate these out neatly and record your answer somewhere where you can retrieve them quickly. And really, guys, it's the same numbers when multiplied together. You're going to be multiplying 2 by 125. That's 250. Okay, so you don't drop the calculator. I've given you the answer. The question is, where does the decimal point lie? So be careful. Have a go. Make sure you can retrieve your answers quickly. So this is 3.1, just in case. You'll know who I'm. So now, decimal uh, division of decimal values. So first thing, guys, you can only divide by a whole number. So I'll just write this out. It's easier to explain as we see it. So here's our problem. And the first step above says count the decimal places in the divisor. Now, from last week, we know the divisor is the one on the bottom or you know, so it's the one being divided in. I won't get caught up in it. So we have three decimal places here. So we need to bounce the decimal point three places so that we have a whole number as a divisor. We So that's our first step. Bounce the decimal point on the bottom. Now to preserve equivalence, we say, we must do the same to the top. So we just write in an extra zero there, bounce the decimal point three places, and this is what we've now got. So it's very important, guys, to realize that these two are the same. And I'll explain that in a little bit in the exact same way that a half is the same as five over 10. Here, guys, I just multiplied the top by five and I multiplied the bottom by five. So I did the same thing to the top and the bottom. We'll explore this more in the next lecture so I won't get too caught up in it. So now, guys, this problem is much easier to solve. Now, technically, the decimal point is still there where it's come bouncing in from. We've moved it three places to the right. But it's the bottom that dictates that, guys. So the bottom dictates. Move the bottom decimal point until we've got a whole number. Then you do the same to the top. So now, another way of looking at it is really what I did, guys. Instead of talking about bouncing decimal points and stuff like that, really what I did, I needed to move the decimal point three places on the bottom. So I multiplied the bottom by a thousand. Each zero moves the decimal point one place. Now, to make sure I'm fair, I need to do the same to the top. So really, guys, mathematically, that's what's going on. And now it's easy enough to arrive at our solution from there. So again, guys, when I'm examining you. I'm not going to be asking you to key these values into the calculator. I'm going to be examining, do you understand the correct technique? So beware. So now we have another few decimal problems. So again, pause the video, sit down, have a wee break and take a look at these. And again, guys, you see it's the same three numbers, or it's the same pair of numbers being divided into each other, one, four, four, and nine in various formats. So all the time I'm interested in, do you understand the technique? You'll get three different answers, but the answers will all have the same numbers in them. So have a wee go. And we'll push on again. So you guys make sure you complete these, you record your answers and record your calculations, guys, because often say if you are if you think one of your answers on the CA test is wrong, please email me if you have a picture of your maths and I think it's justified. I'm more than happy to change your result. So just kind of keep a record. Now, here's another one. 
These ones are a little bit more complicated. These would often be called compound problems. I didn't want to write it up because I thought it would wreck people's heads. But here, guys, we have one, and it's similar to the calculations we just did. But just there's another step. Remember bod mass. So whatever you do, guys, don't forget bod mass. Bod mass is going to start to attack us again next some in the next topic as well. So always keep an eye out for them. Here's the second problem. And again, you see, it's really the same numbers involved. They're just arranged differently. Obviously, you'll be getting different answers for each one. So that guy's kind of takes care of decimals. How do we add and subtract in decimals? How do we multiply and divide in decimals? Two completely separate, separate uh, techniques for multiplication and division. So you've got to be aware of both of them. Now we're going to take a look at rounding up. Most people intuitively know this. So if you're asked to round up, you go to however many numbers you're asked to round up. You, then you look at the next value. If the next value is five or greater, then we round up. If not, leave the number as it is. So say if we have this number here, guys. So again, I just want you to pause, have a wee go and we'll take a look at them round this number to the nearest 10 to the nearest thousand and to the nearest ten thousand we take a look at another number and round this number to five decimal places to three decimal places and to one decimal place oops so oh, don't do that so again Button went the wrong way so again guys just pause the video here and have a wee go at those so i'll just carry on i hope you've paused and had a wee rattle at them this one isn't a test one guys i'm going to work my way through this this is just an example but it's always good to kind of test what how do what do i know now before we start looking at the solutions it's very easy just to sit there and let the video roll by what i really need you guys to be doing is picking up a pencil and a pen or whatever and scribbling out your answers and then seeing okay was i right and if you're not then you need to be a little bit more cautious next time you see a similar one so around this value here to the nearest 10 so like i was saying we go well we need to go to the tens we look at the next value that's eight that's greater than five so that means i need to round up the nine but in order to round up the nine i actually have to round up the five as well so this rounded up would become 16,500. To the nearest thousand, well, here's my thousands. I look at the next value because it's less than five, four, even though it's very close to five. The next value is less than five. So I leave the value as is. I don't round up. Round value to the nearest 10,000. Well, here's my 10,000s. Now I look over. Because the next value is 5 or greater, my 1 gets rounded up to a 2. So to the nearest 10,000, this value is closer to 20,000 than it is to 10,000. That's another way to think of it. Now here, guys, we're asked to go to 5 decimal places. So there's my five decimal places. I look at the next value because the next value is five or greater. It's essential guys that I keep the value. So I must keep the decimal point in the same place. And here we are to five decimal places. To three decimal places. There's my three decimal places. I look over. The eight is greater than five, so the one gets rounded up to a two, but the decimal point stays in the same place. And to one decimal place, I look at the next value. Now, the answer, guys, is not zero. Zero means nothing. There is nothing. There is no value there. In this case, our answer correctly is 0, 0.0.
that is not the same is not equal to zero. So just be aware of that from a science point of view. So that's rounding up, guys. Like I said, I think most people are familiar with it, but I need you to really kind of hold on to the technique. We're going to look at decimal places first. Again, most people are quite confident with decimal places. It's the one after decimal places, sign, uh, significant figures. That's where you've got to be wary. So we look now at decimal places first. So with decimal places, we start at the decimal point, count out the required number of places. So just like we did, I was asking you to go to five decimal places. And that's what we did. We looked at the next value and that determined whether the fifth decimal place got rounded up or not. So say if we have this number here, guys, what I'd like you to do now is round that number as required to one decimal place, to two decimal places, and to three decimal places. So again, pause the video, give it a go. So we'll take a look to one decimal place. Sorry, one decimal place, I'm at the wrong starting point. There's my first decimal place, guys. One place after the decimal point, I look over and I round up to two decimal places. Again, I look over and again, I round the five up to six. To three decimal places. And again, I need to round up. Here, guys, we take a look to one decimal place. So again, you guys give it a go to two decimal places and to three decimal places. So pause the video, give it a go. So here guys to one decimal place. There's my one decimal place. I look over, similar to earlier, it's 0, 0.0. To two decimal places, we look over. So the four gets rounded up. And to three decimal places, there's my three decimal places. I look over and I round up. Now notice I write my answer to three decimal places. So these two answers here, guys, are not the same. Even though they're kind of valued the same. This is accurate to two decimal places. This is accurate to three decimal places. Obviously, the lower one is more accurate. So now again, guys, just to make sure you get the practice in, pause the video and have a wee go at each of these. And again, this is one of your questions, so make sure you're recording everything so that you can retrieve it. So I'll push on again. Make sure you try these. And now we're going to take a look at significant figures. So sig fig, as they're often called, especially when you're writing it, you'll start writing it sig fig very quick. They cause a lot of confusion when first encountered by science students. So it's really science students, guys, who come across this the most. This is one of your little uh, niche maths topics. The method is identical to decimal places. So everything you do is the exact same. Count out the number of required places, look at the next value and round up if this is greater than five. So exactly as we've been looking at for the last five, 10 minutes. The only thing that's different, guys, is where you start. So with decimal places, we started at the decimal point. That kind of made sense. With significant figures, guys, you start at the first number that is not as zero. It's called the first non-zero digit. And that's the major difference between the two of them. So I'm just going to run through a couple of examples quickly to explain it, and then we'll take a more detailed look. So say if I have this number here, guys, 
I'm asked to write this number to one sig fig. So all these examples will be to one sig fig. I'll just write one SF, so I have enough room. What I'm really saying, guys, is I want to describe this number with one digit, that's my significant figure, and then an appropriate number of zeros. So I start here. This is the first non-zero digit. I look over. Okay, that's less than five. So now, guys, my significant figure is three. And this is where people get wrong, get confused. They often write this number into Moodle and they get it wrong. The reason why it's wrong, guys, is we must keep the value of the number, the order of magnitude. My initial value is in the thousands. My value when written as a significant figure must also be in the thousands. So I'm really trying to describe this number with one digit and an appropriate number of zeros in the right place. So here's the same number, just with the decimal point in a different place. So again, guys, we start here. We look, there's my first significant figure. I look over again at zero. This number to one significant figure, the significant figure is three, but in this case, it's 30. So it's very important, guys, to keep the order of magnitude. Is my value in the tens, hundreds, thousands? My significant figure value must be in the same tens, hundreds, or thousands. Here is a value. Write this to one significant figure. Here is my starting point. I look over. The next value is greater than five. So the four gets rounded up, guys. You don't write 5.0 because that's two significant figures. The easiest way to write this number with one digit is five. We don't need any zeros because the original value is in the ones, so we don't need any zeros to describe it. And finally, this value here so again, guys, to one significant figure, I ignore the decimal point. That's not where I start. This is where I start. The first number that's not a zero. We look over and again, the four is going to be rounded up to a five, but I must keep the value, guys. I must keep the decimal point in the same place. And if you can remember that, maintain the order of magnitude, you're going to fly through these. Start at the first non-zero digit. Do to do, as they say, and make sure you keep the order of magnitude. So we'll take a look at a slightly more formal method. Use zeros appropriately to preserve the value or the order of magnitude. So again, guys, have a go, write these to th one, two, and three significant figures. So pause, have a wee pause. And then I'll take you through them. And then we have a look at another number and we'll go again. Whoops, I'm sorry. So here, guys, to one, oh, it's doing this very annoying thing. Here is my first significant figure. I look over, so just, it's simply three, not 3.0, because that's two significant figures, and it should actually be 3.1 anyway, so. Now guys, to two significant figures. So there's the two significant figures. You start with the first number, which, which is not a zero, that's the three. The zero is still significant, and now we look over. Because it's five or greater, the zero gets rounded up to one. And the three significant figures, one, two, three. The five is gonna get rounded up to a six because the next value is greater than five. And again, guys, I'm trying to describe this number using three digits, using two digits, 
using one digit but all of them have the same value they're all in the units so that's what's crucial that's where you're going to make a mistake guys is not this bit not getting the numbers it's getting the order of magnitude right is where you're going to make the mistake so now again guys have a go at this one one significant figure two significant figures three significant figures and i'll go through them then so we take a look again pause the video if you haven't at this stage give it a go one significant figure guys we look over the next number gets rounded up so again guys my first significant figure just to emphasize it is the four the first number that's not a zero we look over gets rounded up so that's me trying to describe this number with one digit in the appropriate place decimal point wise two significant figures guys there's my two significant figures i look over so again i round up but now it's 0, 0.0 5 is the first significant figure and 0 is the second so these are different guys even though from a calculator point of view they're equal from a science point of view they're not this is only to one significant figure this is the two significant figure this is more accurate and finally guys the three significant figures we only have three significant figures but we make sure we keep the decimal point in the correct place so don't be surprised guys if these absolutely wreck your head it just takes a while to get used to them trust me there's been many tears shed over the quiz you're about to embark on so finally guys the last question of this lecture 3.5 so write these values to two significant figures so pause the video here guys and give it a go record and make sure you can retrieve your answers quickly and i'll finish up here so thank you guys for your patience and we will meet again for lecture four.